Whether you use it for a tutorial or to play an entire movie in a movie theater, having a video player is a great way to spice things up. So let's learn how to do it. Then this door will open and you can continue. For this tutorial, I'm gonna be starting things off using the VR Unity template that I provided. You can find it in the description below. We have this is the video template or the beginning title screen of the VR template that I provide. And you know what I'm going to do with this scene? I'm actually gonna duplicate it because it has pretty much everything I want here. Let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and control D and then I'm gonna name this video player video player scene, why not? There we go, and I'm gonna double click that, and so now I'm in the video player scene. So for this new scene, the only thing I want to be playing right now is I, I just want a movie screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this menu and that. So I'm gonna click this, the canvas title and the canvas main menu and just deactivate them. So yeah, let's create some UI so our video has something to play on. So to do that, first I'm just gonna right click and create a new UI. Now, since we were doing a normal game, I'd just use this UI, but since we're doing VR, I'm gonna go to XR and then UI canvas. And I am just going to name this 2D Movie Player or Movie Canvas. Since we use the XR UI instead of the normal UI, it's already put us in world space here. So our render mode should be good. We just need to adjust these sizes really quick. All right. And if you see over here, you can see what inputs I've put, but we can't really see what's going on with this canvas. It'd help a lot more if we had some kind of image to see it all. So I'm just going to go over to UI image. And yeah, raw image. And I am going to stretch this out. So this is shift and alt and click. So now we can see this stretched out here. Now, next up, I'm gonna add a video player component. So add component, video player, and then I'm gonna add two buttons. So we're gonna go down to UI button, text mesh pro. And I don't really need the text here. So I'm gonna delete that. Let's see here. I'm gonna rename this start button. And then, yeah, I'm gonna stretch this for the entire screen because I want the entire screen to be clickable. So if we're starting the movie, just click anywhere and it should work. I'm also not a big fan of this little icon here. So you know what I might do? I, I'm gonna add a new image. So UI and then let's go image. And I've already grabbed these from the internet. They're just little icons. You can find these anywhere. If you do import your images or icons from the internet, just make sure you come here, texture type, and just change it to the sprite. And I should be able to click and drag that here, which that is a little big. And so we'll change the size of that. And to change the size, I'm gonna link all these and let's try 0.005. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty good looking, but we still have this weird circle there. I'm just gonna come over here and change this to none. All right, and there we go. That is looking pretty good. Now we do need a pause button. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this. I'm gonna call this pause button. Now the difference with the pause button is I want it to be active when the movie's playing so we can press the screen anywhere and that'll pause it. So I don't necessarily want a pause image here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just like hide that. Yeah, I'll just get rid of it. We don't need it. And then we will deactivate this. So we don't want it active when the game starts. And one last finishing touch on the pause button. Uh, you know what? We should probably change this image opacity to zero just so it's see-through and doesn't block the screen. There we go. Last thing we need to do is hook up the button. So if I go to start button, I'm gonna go ahead and click this three times. And then the first thing I want to do is make sure that the video is playing, which the video player I put on this raw image, which, you know, I am going to rename this to video player. And then I'm gonna come back to the start button, drag this here, and then we go into the video player and press play. I also want the start button to be deactivated, but I also want to activate the pause button. So I want the pause button to be activated first. I'm gonna come here, game objects, set to active and true. And then we take the start button and we are gonna set this to false. And there we go, that should work. And then we have to do the same for the pause button, but on the opposite end. So we're gonna go ahead and drag the video player here. I'm gonna go video player and pause. We are going to take the start button and activate it. And then deactivate the pause button. With those in place, if we come over to the video player, we can see what we need. So we need some form of render texture, and then we also need a video clip. And 
I won't be able to provide a video clip in this tutorial. I'm going to use my own, but I'm sure you can find one laying around. They're pretty easy to get. So with that, I'm going to import mine really quickly. And now we need to get it hooked up to our video player. And to do that is simply clicking and dragging and putting it in the video clip right here. Now, next we need to have a target texture, which is a render texture. So if we right click, go to create, and then we just go down to render texture. All right, and there's the render texture. And I'm just gonna call this, let's say render texture 2D movie. Now, one thing we wanna make sure is that the size of the render texture is going to be the same as our video. And if you don't know what the size of your video is, you can actually, let's drag this up here. Why is this fighting me? We can go source info. There we go. All right, now it's gonna let me drag it. So it was on this. Now I can go to source info and you can see here it is 1920 by 1080. So I will come back to the render texture and change that. Cool, let's get this hooked into our video player. So I'm going to drag this into the render texture and you're thinking now, hey, this should work, but not quite yet. We have one last thing we need to do. And that last thing is going to actually be putting the render texture also here for our raw image. And one thing I'll point out is if we didn't have the start button stretched out here, you'll see it actually makes this whole thing disappear. So let me go back to none. And then we'll put the render texture back there. And so, yeah, you see it makes it vanish. So if you did want to have a background while that's there, you might also have to use an image to cover the whole plane. But yeah, just wanted to point that out. Now, one last thing before we boot into the scene, you'll see here on the video player, it does have play on awake. That's its default. For some reason, Unity loves having play on awake be the default for both sound and video players. I don't get it. I don't think it should be the default, but what are you gonna do? Unity is gonna Unity. So I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck that. But I do wanna point out that since we are developing for the Quest and the Quest does like us to use a color space of linear instead of gamma, I was getting this interesting bug right here and it was getting a little grouchy. And if you want to fix that, just come up here, you click that. And then for the codec, we're gonna change it to VP8 and hit apply. And then it's gonna run through this. And after it's done transcoding, that should fix this little bug here. And let's start up the scene and see what we're working with. Ooh, and you know what? I almost got too excited. We should probably make sure our ray interactors are set to interact with UI components. So if we click this, you can see this is layer UI. And if I go to our left controller and right controller, and let's see here. Yep, interaction layer mask is set to default. We want it to be UI. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And you know what? We'll do the same for our left hand. There we go. All right, now let's start it up. Now when I boot into it, I can click play. Hey, let's see what it says. Hey, if you're hearing this, that means the video play is working and you should probably like and subscribe so I can continue to grow my channel. I love you, bye bye. Hey, that guy sounds pretty smart, but yeah, it looks like our video's player is working and with the video player working, we should be all set. I hope you found it useful as always to my Patreon members. You keep me afloat and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.